survive our extreme desert temperatures here in the summer, our animals have a variety of adaptations. Some of them are behavioral and some of them are physiological. So behaviorally, some of our animals will dig deeper burrows in the summer to take advantage of those cooler temperatures. They will also change the time of day that they're active. So some animals that are normally active during the day may move to being active at dusk or dawn, or some of them go completely nocturnal so that you're not being exposed to that hot desert sun all day long. Physiological adaptations greatly benefit the native creatures of this land, so temperatures that might feel unbearable to us will actually be preferable for most of the Mojave natives. Our lizards are really well adapted to living in this extreme temperatures in our summer. One of the coolest ones is the desert iguana, and they actually will be active outside in temperatures as hot as 110 degrees. So they have a very high tolerance for these extreme temperatures. So chuck wallows are also very heat tolerant lizards, and their ideal body temperature is around 105 degrees. So they can be found outside basking in really warm temperatures. So when they do get too warm, they like to duck into rock crevices or little rock nooks and crannies to cool off and escape the sun. So they also have the ability to change their skin color, so from darker to lighter. So if they're trying to absorb more sun, their skin will be darker. If they're trying to reflect it, it will turn lighter. They also rarely drink water, and they get most of the water they need from the plants that they eat. Unique in its name, appearance, and behavior, the Gila monster endures the worst the season can throw at it by waiting out the sunny daytime hours, choosing instead to enjoy the nightlife except when relief comes in the form of rare monsoonal showers. They eagerly wander out to fill up at the nearest pocket of water, and they can bank that abundance through the toughest of dry spells. Heel monsters, which are our largest lizard we have here in the Mojave Desert, change their activity patterns when the temperatures start getting warm. So they are generally diurnal, which means they're active during the day. But as the temperatures warm up, they start to shift later and later. So they'll become crepuscular, which means active at dusk or dawn. And then during the really hot summer temperatures, they become completely nocturnal. And they also have the ability to store water in their bladders. And it doesn't rain very often here in the summer. So when we do get rain, they will take advantage of that and actually binge drink and fill up on that water that they are storing in their bladders. So when resources are low, they can live off those stores for long periods of time. Among the clever adaptations employed by our desert natives is the ability to shed heat through large, highly vascular ears as the desert cottontails do or use long legs to stand high off the hot sands as many lizards and beetles do. But perhaps the prize for best adaptation goes to the kangaroo rat, which can survive without having to drink water at all. So they can actually go their entire lives without drinking any water. They get all the water they need from the seeds that they eat. Part of the metabolic process is producing water and they survive completely on the water that they produce from eating their seeds. A gentle demeanor and charming appearance make the desert tortoise one of our most popular native animals. They also employ most of these same strategies for withstanding the heat, but their popularity might place them in jeopardy if we decide to pick them up or handle them. So desert tortoises have the ability to store water in their bladders. Now they get most of the water that they store from the plants that they eat. They also take advantage of our occasional rainfall. They will dig what's called a catchment basin. And when it rains, they'll remember where they've dug that and they'll go back to it and get their fill of drinking water. So one of the things that happens when you pick up a desert tortoise is it will actually evacuate its bladder. So its defense mechanism is to pee all over you. So if you see one crossing the road, you might think you're helping it by picking it up and moving it to the side of the road. But when it urinates all over you, it is losing all its stores. So it has a really high chance of being coming dehydrated. Humans are relative newcomers to this hot, arid part of the world, having not evolved the natural defenses or instincts for survival. We have instead employed technological strategies for enduring the heat and lack of water. Now, while this has worked relatively well for many years, we need to find ways to be comfortable without depleting precious resources. Perhaps surprisingly, those who have survived here all along just might provide the answers for us as well. So one of the most important things we can learn from these desert animals is to stay out of the sun in these really extreme summer temperatures. They find shade, they find cooler burrows, and as people, we have the ability to stay inside in the more climate controlled areas and not expose ourselves to the hot desert sun in the middle of the day. So if you are outside in these hot temperatures, 
you want to make sure you're staying hydrated. A lot of our animals have adapted to this by having really efficient kidneys or being able to store water in their bladders. And since we aren't, we have to carry our own water with us. So make sure you're drinking more than you think you need to.